while men were asleep, as enemy came, and also copper among the wheat, and went his way. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Okay, well. First from the Gospel today. It can be applied both on a personal and collective level. Personally, on an individual level, when we stop making sacrifices, when we stop praying, when we become lax in the spiritual life, the weeds start to come out more. The enemy starts sowing doubt in our mind, maybe, about the faith, or starts sowing temptations against the sixth and ninth commandment, or other vices, right? So there are times in which if we are not vigilant, that different uh, vices will be sown by the enemy, which is cockling there among the wheat. doesn't mean that as if we're lazy that we've lost all the good that we have. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden we have no wheat, but the weeds start to come in the wheat, start to, to grow and to choke the wheat, to take the moisture away from the wheat that's, that needs it. Okay. So, the cockle in effect chokes the wheat. Before this, we need to arm ourselves, we need to protect ourselves against such fate by what we've spoken about before, being the rule of life. The rule of life or the schedule it gives us order. It gives us something to fall back upon. It gives us something that says, okay, this is the will of God for me in this moment. So that by doing it, we're sowing more wheat, and we're making sure that whatever weeds are there, no more weeds are growing. The weed might not be able to be pulled out right now. It might need time. It might be too deep, the weeds that are already there. But over time, as we cooperate with God's grace, little by little, the weeds hold over us, grow weaker, and then we're able at some point to take them out. Okay. And just by doing what we're supposed to do when we're supposed to do it, it takes away a lot of the opportunity for the weeds to grow and to get stronger. Because we're not giving occasion to them. To, to get stronger and get bigger. Okay. So, and as we go on, if we are faithful to that rule of life, if there are, which is fidelity to God, then God gives extra graces, gives us more strength to be able to remove the weeds. Now we see in the gospel today that Christ, he says that not to remove the weeds, because you might take some of the wheat with it. And one of the interpretations here, we could say, is that even though the weeds must be removed either in this life or the next, either by prayer and penance now, or by being burned away in purgatory, and when they're burned away, remember the wheat is in there, it has roots, so we feel it in, the, in our marrow, right, our being. So, over time, you know, with, with God's grace, you know, he, he will help us. But in the meantime, for a time, he will allow the weeds to be there to remind us, okay, how did they get there to begin with? So how is it that you are in this situation now? Think about it so that it doesn't happen again. And then also, if God, just by one prayer, removed the weeds, we might take credit for it. And then all of a sudden, in that one moment, a million weeds come up, just like that. So, pride destroys the weed, the, the goodness in our soul. So for humility's sake, God will allow the weeds to be there, otherwise the weed will be pulled up with it. But over time, if we're faithful to our rule of life, if we do the other things that we need to do, if we practice charity, towards our every brethren, I mean, and, and, and love them, 
and try to, in all patience to bring them to Christ, then we will obtain the graces that we need in time to have those weeds pulled out. Okay. Ultimately, all of this will help us to become more like St. Simeon. We celebrated the Feast of the Purification, or a candle mass, this, this past week. And St. Simeon was one who longed his whole life. He prayed. He did what he was responsible for doing every day as a priest of the old law. Every day he was faithful to God, and then he was given the what the object of his desire in this life, to see Christ in the flesh before he died. And then he would have to wait a time until Christ would die and rise from the dead, right, in Pentecost Sunday. It was all right before the, the ascension, and then Christ would bring all his beloved to heaven. So, for us, it might take a while before we, we obtain that grace of being, of being able to conquer once and for all, that vice or that, that evil inclination that continues to war against us. It might take weeks, months, years, even. But if we keep praying and keep per persevering, this is what we said last week, cooperating with Our Lady from, from that Our Lady of Good Success, the Novita, cooperating with her, right, and saying, okay, I give this to you, Mary, I give this weakness, I give this illness, the spiritual sickness to you, but I'm going to fight against it. She will accept that sacrifice, but it doesn't mean it will be gone right away. So it might be however long it takes before we get, are given a gift like St. Simeon received. Of course, for him it was not because of any spiritual illness. It was simply the divine providence that should happen at that time. But for us, we can make the application to that. That at some point, all of a sudden, we receive an illumination of conscience. We see Christ in a way we have not seen him before. And all of a sudden, the tears come. And we realize the evil that we have done we recognize the wickedness of the attachments and we're mortified by it. And then as a result, in that moment, we're healed. And we are done. And we go to heaven. So that's more so on a personal level, individual level. On a collective level, we can apply today's gospel to the church in the last 100 years. Remember that Pope St. Pius X warned in the early part of the 20th century that if his successors were not vigilant, the caged monster that was in his modernism would break free. Little by little, this is what happened. And we can liken it to this. Let's use this example of, of the, the weeds here. What St. Pope St. Pius X was able to do, he took the weeds out, but he couldn't kill them. He wasn't given him to kill them, right? So he had to basically put all the weeds aside in a separate field. So they're all there, warring with each other, right? Cleaned it out so that the, the wheat of the field, as a church, was clean again. But then what happened was, under his successors, especially Pius XI and Pius XII, there isn't much to say about Benedict XV except maybe too political. He was entrenched in the First World War, and he didn't have any too much in terms of cyclicals, not very renowned, it's not one of the most well-known of popes, really. And, but after him, he had actually, he is the one that did codify the Code of Canon Law, the Pio Benedictine Code of Canon Law. That was probably his biggest thing that he did, right? And he was also the pope at the time of Fatima, when Fatima happened. Uh, but Pius XI and Pius XII came after. Imagine, see, Pius XI, he, he would see in the field of the church, a weed would pop up. You know, he's told about it. And then when he was told about it, he said, okay, well, that weed can stay there, but just, if any others come up, pull them out, is what he was doing. And an example of this would be the dialogue mass. All of a sudden, out of the blue, the dialogue mass, which was not a part of tradition at all, even for the sun masses, the choir was the clergy. <laughs> this is something reiterated by Pope St. Pius X in his, in his document on sacred liturgy, the sacred music. But after him, there were abuses because of a bad translation to his document, and Pius XI went along with it, and then all of a sudden you see that Pius XI said, okay, he was, he was warned that in different places in Europe where the, there was a, the dialogue mess, and the people were responding to the priest. And he said it was, it was unfortunate. He said, okay, wherever it's happening, don't stop them, but if you find about it anywhere else, they're not to do it. 
literally his response. Well, how well do you think that went? <laughs> not well at all. Because if you treat the weed as if it's not really a categorical problem, and you don't remove it, if you don't have that vigilance, those under you are not going to have that vigilance. And if you're saying, okay, it's not categorically bad, or we wouldn't be able to do it. So others started to do it. And then it didn't stop. And the problem here is the false principle that, that says that the people are meant to more actively participate in the liturgy, verbally. Whereas the, the part of the laity is to pray in union with the priest, silently. That is the point of the, the people's participation, which was the case for hundreds and hundreds of years. And then all of a sudden, this started to change in the 20th century, and Pius XI allowed it. Then Pius XII went even farther. He didn't even stop the weeds at all. He allowed the mother of all weeds, in terms of the changes in Holy Week, to happen in 1955. That weed, which started out looking like it was the pre-55, or excuse me, the 55 liturgy, 56 liturgy, became the Novus Order. It was the principles that were inherent in that those liturgies that bore fruit, spread, and became the Novus Order. And one of the ways we see this is in Palm Sunday, in the new Holy Week from 1956, is that you have a table there, that where the palms are put, whereas traditionally speaking, the priest faces the altar, he turns and blesses the palms. Just like any of you who are here for candle mass saw that I was facing the altar and, and saying the prayers and blessing the, the uh, candles. Well, in the new rites, in the new rite, the priest at this point turns and faces the people with the table there with the palms. And he blesses the palms that way. We, that later would become huge. That thought right there, all of a sudden, oh, it was okay for the priest to be facing the people for this blessing. Why can't he do that for Mass too? And it's just the next step, right? So that's just one example of a very a, a terrible principle that became principally important. Okay. So we see, because of lack of vigilance, because these, these popes did not listen to Pope St. Pius X, who did as much as he could, because they were not vigilant, like Pope St. Pius V with the liturgy, and also in terms of society as well, combating communism, right? Combating I mean, the worldliness and, and getting the, the rosary to be said more and more for the intentions of, of uh, the Holy Father and also for, for the good of the church. Because they were not, we, we are in the situation that we are today. Okay? So these, it, it, with, with situation in the church, that's why it's so important for us, what our responsibility is, is to hold the correct liturgy without any compromise. To hold the faith completely without compromise. And you have different groups now. You have, on one hand, you know, the, the, the resistance or and what the SSPX used to be, fighting really hard against the errors of the modern world, but always having a to liturgy. Now you have some of the compromised, uh, the, uh, formerly compromised groups like the FSSP, and then, of course, traditionally, I know uh, what Father President told me uh, years ago that the Institute of Christ the King was allowed to offer the pre-55 liturgy. You have some of these Indo groups offering the pre-55 liturgy, but they have the wrong doctrine. <laughs> so you have different groups that have, have one group as one half, other group as other half. You need both. And that's what we're trying to do here, and making sure that we have. So that in having that, and pleasing God, at least objectively speaking, with having the faith, with having the right liturgy, in its entirety, as best as we can do in a small chapel, that gives the foundation for virtue. And so that we can, on a personal level, fight against the weeds and overcome them, and be able to, with God's help, have the strength to pull them out. And then, also, little by little, in our group here to push out the weeds from society, from the church. And we may think we're not that important, but the more and more we do this, the more faithful that we are, the more they come, the more strength that we have, and the more, in, in the end, we'll be able to help Our Lady to crush the head of the serpent, which she's already done, but we make up, as St. Louis Mark said, we make up Our Lady's heel to crush the head of the serpent.
which keeps showing its head. So, it's my responsibility to make sure that the wheat remains exactly that here and not be corrupted by that example and, and them, themselves become weeds. So, and in doing that, we set the example for others and we, even though others do not see what we are doing, we are helping the church. We are uh, strengthening the, the cause, really, against modernism and ultimately against Lucifer. So we need to believe that and just be very grateful for what we have and hold on to it as a priceless treasure. And to follow the good customs, not just in the chapel, but outside of the chapel. To give that good example, that unction to others, that they may follow, that they may learn, without us even having to say a word. Remember St. Francis would say, you know, preach the gospel always if necessary, use words. So for us now, it's our example that's most important. The words will come the more penance we do. And we'll know we'll have the wisdom to speak when we're supposed to speak. Okay, so, but it, there's a proper order. We have to have, objectively speaking, what God wants before we can really be able to be pleasing to him in a private level and then to be able to have those weeds pulled out so that we may, there may be a harvest that God can reap and the devil's not reaping, right, uh, of us in eternity. Okay. So we pray to the Holy Ghost today to reveal in some small measure the field of our soul. Wherever we fall in the spectrum, in the meantime, you know, by our current dispositions. We do this with the willingness to cooperate with an initial grace of the Holy Ghost and stay awake in our efforts to remove the weeds and grow the wheat in our soul. The more who do this, the sooner the weeds and we say the weasels will be removed from the church and from society, the sooner the reign of Mary will begin. That's no exaggeration. In the name of the Father.